Does it sometimes seem like God was just screwing around when he invented certain animals, or worse? That evolution has just gone totally insane and created the most ridiculous creatures ever? Like, well, humans are pretty weird, right? When you think about it, from the snake that likes to roll very deep to the freakiest barnacles in town, here's 20 living things that shouldn't exist but do. <laughs> Number 20, Garter Snakes. The greatest gathering of snakes in the world can be seen in Narcisse, Manitoba. Thousands of male garter snakes emerge from underground in the early spring, and they are horny. When a much bigger female emerges, she will be encircled by a massive mating ball of up to a hundred males all seeking to mate with her at the same time. These animals shouldn't exist on Earth, but they damn well do. Some males even emit female pheromones in order to entice other males to mate with them. After all, who wouldn't want that kind of attention? Carter snakes have sophisticated pheromonal communication networks. By following their pheromone-scented trails, they may locate other snakes. Male and female skin pheromones are so different that they can be easily distinguished. Male garter snakes, on the other hand, may generate both male and female pheromones. This ability deceives other males into seeking to mate with them throughout the mating season. This produces kleptothermy, or the transfer of heat to them, which is advantageous shortly after hibernation since it allows them to become more active. In the mating balls that develop at the den when females join the mating maelstrom, male snakes emitting both male and female pheromones have been demonstrated to get more copulations than regular snakes. A snake hatch can produce up to 57 young. A garter snake may coil and attack if frightened, but it usually hides its head and flails its tail. These snakes also secrete a foul-smelling, musky-scented substance from a gland near the cloaca. When they're cornered by a predator, they frequently adopt these strategies to flee. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Gooseneck Barnacles Gooseneck barnacles, also known as stocked barnacles or gooseneck barnacles, are filter-feeding crustaceans that dwell in the ocean intertidal zone, clinging to the hard surfaces of rocks and flotsam. Goose barnacles used to be classified as part of the taxonomic order Pedunculata, however, research has led to stocked barnacles being classified as part of various orders of the infraclass Thoracisa. Some goose barnacle species, such as Lepa sanitifera, are pelagic and can be found on tide rack along oceanic shores. Because barnacle geese, Branta leucopsis, were never known to nest in temperate Europe before it was discovered that birds migrate, it was supposed that they evolved from this crab through spontaneous generation. The color and form resemblances were the source of the mistake. Barnacles were thought to be connected to branches before falling into the ocean because they were frequently seen on driftwood. Gerald of Wales, the Archdeacon of Brecon, claimed this in his Topographia Hiberniae because barnacle geese were supposed to be neither flesh nor born of flesh. They were permitted to be eaten on days when Christians prohibited eating meat. However, this was not widely recognized. In 1456, the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II studied barnacles and found no indication of a bird-like embryo, while Leo of Rosmetal's secretary published a doubtful description of his response to being fed the goose at a fast day supper. Number 18. High Eyes 
We're going to meet a nocturnal ape this time, no less than the world's biggest nocturnal primate, and this individual has some odd traits. First, there are the large orange eyes that shine brightly through the night, set inside a cat-like head. Then there are the teeth, which, like a rat's, never stop growing. It also possesses squirrel-like claws, which caused some naturalists to assume it was a rodent, but it turns out to be a primate much like you and me. Unless, of course, you're an extremely clever rat watching this. Anyway, the I.I. appears to be made up of a bunch of creatures thrown together at random, but that's not the end of it. On each hand, it possesses an abnormally long middle finger that it uses to tap on wood, prompting insects to flee the vibrations that the I.I.'s specialized hearing can perceive. The I.I. then gnaws a hole in the wood and pulls the fleeing insects out with another crazy specialized finger, a style of hunting that is highly unique in the animal realm. The Malagasy people refer to the animal as Ai, which means no-no, since they have historically refused to speak the animal's name, which is thought to be wicked and magical. I can kind of see where they're coming from. Number 17. Cherboa's Jerboas are jumping desert rodents found in North Africa and Asia, and they belong to the Dipodidae family. They like to dwell in scorching deserts. Jerboas may reach speeds of up to 24 kilometers an hour when pursued. Little owls feed on a variety of animals in Central Asia, but jerboas in general have good hearing which they employ to avoid becoming prey for nocturnal predators. Jerboas' average lifespan is about six years. They hide in burrows throughout the day to avoid the heat. Due to the colder temperatures of their surroundings, they leave their burrows at night, they excavate their tunnel openings amid plant growth, often along field edges. They dig tunnels in mounds or hills to lessen the risk of floods during the rainy season. Jerboas inhabiting holes in the summer seal the entrance to keep out the hot air and, according to some studies, predators. Burrows are usually built with an emergency escape that finishes just beneath the surface or opens at the surface but is not heavily blocked. This permits the jerboa to flee predators swiftly. Jerboas dig four different kinds of burrows. During the day, a temporary summer day burrow is used for shelter while hunting. They have a second, temporary burrow that they utilize for nocturnal hunting. They have two permanent burrows, one for the summer and the other for the winter. Throughout the summer, the permanent summer burrow is actively used and the young are reared there. Number 16. Pyrosomes. Pyrosomes are free-floating colony tunicates that reside in the open ocean's top layers and warm waters. However, some can be found at deeper depths. Pyrosomes are zooids, which are cylindrical or cone-shaped colonies with a diameter of up to 18 meters and hundreds to thousands of individuals. Colonies can be as little as one centimeter in length or as large as several meters. They're usually referred to as sea pickles, other names for them include sea worms, sea squirts, fire bodies, and cockroaches of the sea. Each zooid is only a few millimeters long, yet they are all encased in a gelatinous tunic that connects them together. Each zooid has two openings, one on the inside and one on the outside of the tube, bringing ocean water in through the bronchial basket, removing the tiny plant cells on which it feeds, and then expelling the filtered water to the interior of the colony cylinder. On the outside, each bump represents a single zooid, yet on the interior, the colony is practically smooth, but pierced with holes for each zooid. Pyrosomes are bioluminescent and produce a mild blue-green light that may be observed for tens of meters. Pyrosomes are connected to salps and are often referred to as fire salps. On rare occasions, sailors on the open seas will see calm seas with a large number of pyrosomes, all of which glow in the dark. Number 15. Mantis Shrimp 
Stomatopods, sometimes known as mantis shrimp, are predatory marine crustaceans that developed around 340 million years ago from other Malacostraca species. Mantis shrimp grow to be around 3.9 inches long on average, but some can reach up to 15 inches in length. More than 450 different species of mantis shrimp have been documented, with colors ranging from drab to bright. They are are among the most important predators in many shallow tropical and subtropical marine settings. Despite their extensive range, many species spend the most of their lives buried in tunnels and holes, making them difficult to study. Mantis shrimps use their powerful raptorials to spear, mobilize, or dismember their prey. Some mantis shrimp species have specialized calcified clubs that can strike with great force, while others have pointed forelimbs that can capture food. Mantis shrimps are long-lived creatures who participate in complex activities, such as ritualized warfare. Some animals use fluorescent patterns on their bodies to communicate with one another and maybe even with other species, therefore expanding their behavioral signal repertoire. And maybe even with other species, therefore expanding their behavioral signal repertoire, they have excellent memory and learning abilities, as well as the capacity to recall specific neighbors with whom they interact often. They can identify them based on visual and even olfactory signals. Many have developed intricate social behaviors to defend their area from competition. Number 14. Rock Hyrax a medium-sized, terrestrial animal endemic to Africa and the Middle East is the rock hyrax. Rock hyraxes may be found up to 4,200 meters above sea level in environments with rock crevices that allow them to hide from predators. Hyraxes are social creatures, which dwell in groups of 10 to 80 individuals and forage together. It has been noted that they utilize sentries to warn of predators approaching. They are most active in the morning and evening due to their imperfect thermoregulation. However, their activity pattern varies greatly depending on the season and temperature. The rock hyrax is not threatened in most of its range, yet it is considered a minor nuisance in certain regions. It is a Leishmaniasis parasite carrier in Ethiopia. Israel, and Jordan. This species, along with other hyrax species and Cyrenians, is the most closely related to elephants. Hyracium, a sticky mass of dung and urine produced by rock hyraxes, has been used as a folk cure in South Africa to treat a variety of medical conditions, including epilepsy and convulsions. Perfumers are increasingly using hyracium, which is tinctured in alcohol to produce a natural animal musk due to passages in the Old Testament in Leviticus 11.5 and the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. The rock hyrax is categorized as treif, according to Kashrut, Jewish food hygiene regulations. So don't ask for hyrax bagels at your kosher deli. Number 13. Peacock Spiders you claim there's a deadly jumping spider with a peacock fantail on its butt that likes to dance and is also a good drummer? How did I go so long without noticing him? And is it about to jump up and murder me? Because it's barely 0.3 feet long, you probably didn't see it either. Arachnophobes will be relieved to learn this. Even if it did bite, it would have little chance of puncturing human skin to deliver its venom due to its small mouth. Mouth. This little spider is far more dangerous to the crickets and other spiders that they prey on. It does not weave webs or sit and wait like many other spiders. This spider is a go-getter, and it hunts like a lion, attacking prey three times its own size and ripping it apart as the poison takes effect. However, they are true lovers rather than combatants, and their mating rituals are a great sight. The males have a peacock fan on their 
their buttocks, and like dancing and drumming on the ground, which appears to activate receptors in the female's legs, putting them in a good mood. Number 12. Shoebill Storks Remember earlier I said that birds are descended directly from dinosaurs? It's true, and they're a live link to a planet that died 65 million years ago, or depending on how you look at it. With the release of Jurassic Park 3, one thing that the first Jurassic Park film may have gotten incorrect was depicting T-Rex and Velociraptors as scaly. It's possible they possessed feathers, exactly like birds, and they possessed hollow, low-density bones, which not only allowed them to grow so large, but also provided them with the necessary materials to fly. Anyway, if you're looking at a local pigeon, this might be hard to believe, but one glance at the shoe bill, and you'll notice how close it is to the dinosaurs straight away. These enormous birds, which have a shoe for a face, dwell in Uganda and the neighboring areas. They were once thought to be a kind of stork, although they really belong to the pelican family. In any case, this 5'5 five five monstrous dinosaur bird is a strange creature. Number 11. Secretary Birds the secretary bird's name is somewhat odd, you might wonder why they named it that. It has neatly styled hair, is dressed in black and white over a feminine figure, has extraordinarily long legs, and a pair of high heels capable of tearing a snake to shreds in seconds. This dream secretary has a lethal side to her. They are the world's longest legged birds of prey, and just look at that walk. They are mostly found in Africa, where they reside in grasslands, savanna, and deserts. They're enormous and odd-looking, with the body of an eagle and the legs of a crane. They don't like flying, and why would they with these legs? They are cool-looking as they fly, though. With their legs hanging behind them, and broad extended wings like an eagle, they will devour mice, hares, tortoises, snakes, even dangerous ones, lizards, crabs, scorpions, and a variety of other things as they hunt and chase their prey around the ground. They have no natural predators and kill snakes and rats, which is useful to people. This is a really amazing bird. Number 10. Horror Frogs the hairy frogfish is a strange-looking fish, or frog. It's a frogfish, so it's a little bit of both, but it's primarily a fish, but it's mostly a hairy blob that lives in coral, particularly in warmer ocean temperatures where reefs are prevalent. But it's not just about appearing odd. The hairy frogfish also wants to be odd. This isn't a joke. First, it uses its hair, which are really spines as a sort of camouflage, which is complemented by the frogfish's ability to change color to fit its environment in chameleon-like fashion. They also can't swim, which you may assume is a disadvantage for a fish. It doesn't appear to be slowing them down, though. They don't enjoy wasting energy following things around, so one extra long spine hangs over their lips and serves as a bait. When someone swims by to look at the bait, the frogfish can really move, even the most modern slow-motion cameras struggle to capture the frogfish's assault because it is so quick. The movement takes only one six-thousandth of a second, making it one of the world's quickest eaters. Number 9. Sea Sapphires a sea sapphire is a copod, which is a little crustacean with long antennae that can survive almost anywhere there's adequate water. They prefer to stay cool between the surface and 1,000 feet under. The flashing colors they emit are the most stunning aspect about them. Yellow, orange, and red are common near the surface, but green, blue, and violet and magenta can be found lower down. It's not simply distinct species 
species that cause this, even near cousins might have different colors. They're the ocean's version of M&Ms. The color shifts might be important for mating, according to scientists, but it's still a mystery. They swim in spirals, which creates a vibrant display with bursts of color. This may also serve as a deterrent to predators, or maybe they're just hoping to be thrown around a Christmas tree someplace in the ocean's depths one day. Number 8. Pangolins one of nature's cutest and oddest creatures is the pangolin. They've been making headlines recently as one of the numerous culprits we've sought to pin the coronavirus on. They are the only animal on the planet clad with keratin scales from head to toe. Pangolins come in eight different species, four of which are found in Africa and four in Asia. They like tropical woods, savanna, and dry woodlands to call home. They are nocturnal Colonel termite hunters with excellent hearing and smell senses. In a single year, a single pangolin may consume up to 70 million termites. They also have an incredible defense mechanism. They wrap up into a tough, scaly ball that even lions can't bite through. Humans, on the other hand, may just pick them up in this form, and this is frequently done, particularly in China, where pangolin scales are employed in all sorts of bizarre medicine. With two billion Chinese eager to eat pangolins for healthy blood, the pangolins have little chance of surviving and are already critical endangered. Fortunately, the more reasonable country of Taiwan has a long-standing pangolin conservation and preservation policy, which has resulted in the world's greatest pangolin population density. Taiwan, you've done a great job. Number 7. Ardwolf the aardwolf is a kind of aardwolf. It's not an aardvark, believe it or not. It's not a wolf either. It has nothing to do with aardvarks or wolves. Therefore, whoever named it, go sit in the stupid corner for a while. There will be no more animal naming for you or for the creator of the satanic leaf-tailed gecko. Yes, there is such a creature. But we're not here to speak about geckos or Satan. We're here to talk about hard wolves. the smallest member of the hyena family. These lovely little hairy animals are really the tiniest members of the hyena family. Perhaps the mistake sprang from the fact that these little hyenas, like the aardvark, like eating termites. They appear to be scavengers, similar to their larger cousins, since they are frequently spotted dining on rotting corpses of deceased animals. But they don't consume the flesh, instead they devour the beetles and insects that eat the decaying meat. So that's not at all repulsive. Cute small creatures, like I already said. Number 6. Sea Spiders Sea spiders are marine arthropods that can be found in all of the world's seas. Over 1,300 species have been identified, with legs ranging in length from 1 mm to over 70 cm in relatively shallow depths. Most are on the lesser end of this spectrum. Nevertheless, in Antarctic and deep seas, they can grow to be huge. Despite the fact that sea spiders are neither actual spiders or even arachnids, their conventional categorization as chalicerates puts them closer to true spiders than to other well-known arthropod groups like insects or crustaceans. However, genetic data implies they are the sister group to all other extant arthropods, therefore this is a point of contention. In contrast to their modest body size, sea spiders have long legs. Walking legs are normally eight, however there are species 
with five and six pairs. These animals may be found all over the world, from Australia, New Zealand, the United States Pacific Coast, to the Mediterranean Sea and Caribbean Sea, as well as the North and South Poles. They prefer shallow waters, but may be found as deep as 7,000 meters. Cnidarians, sponges, polychaetes, and pyrozoans are the primary prey of sea spiders, which are generally carnivorous predators or scavengers, despite the fact that they may feed by putting their proboscis into much bigger sea anemones. Most sea anemones survive the trauma, making the sea spider a parasite rather than a predator of anemones. Number 5. Weaver Birds The sociable weaver bird is one of the world's most spectacular nest builders, and it resides in southern Africa. These birds reside in a communal nest, which is unusual for birds who usually live in tiny family groups. These birds' nests are magnificent and extremely enormous. They have the capacity to host up to a hundred breeding pairs. They are made up of a sophisticated system of chambers that act as a cooling system, keeping the birds cool and comfortable under the hot African heat. When it's 90 degrees outside, the inside of one of these nests might be as cool as 45 degrees. They prefer to construct between acacia trees, although they have also used telephone poles in recent years. Many generations of birds can live in these nests, which can endure up to a hundred years. The openings are on the bottom and resemble honeycomb, but they are surrounded by sharp sticks to dissuade predators. These remarkable birds are actually rising in number as a result of the numerous man-made buildings that suit their construction style. However, they occasionally build between electrical pylons causing fires and power outages. Number 4. Gooey Ducks Gooey ducks are enormous clams found from Alaska to Baja, California. On the west coast of North America, gooey ducks may weigh up to 7 pounds and have an odd appearance, with their external shell being smaller than their soft interiors, and a big and projecting siphon, or neck. The gooey duck is found in the eastern North Pacific Ocean's coastal waters from Alaska to Baja, California. The gooey duck is the world's biggest burrowing clam. It's also one of the world's longest living mammals. With an average lifetime of 140 years, and the world's oldest at 168, the gooey duck draws plankton-laden water down into its long siphon, filters it for food, then ejects its waste through a different opening in the siphon. Gooey ducks have few natural predators as adults, which may contribute to their length the lifespan, sea otters and dogfish have been known to dislodge gooey ducks in Alaska, and starfish have been known to attack and feed on the exposed gooey duck siphon. Gooey ducks reproduce in large groups. During her century-long existence, a female gooey duck produces over 5 billion eggs. Populations are sluggish to recover due to a low rate of recruitment and a high incidence of mortality for gooey ducks, larvae, and post settled juveniles. According to research, a harvested tract in the Puget Sound takes 39 years to regenerate. Number 3. Dick Dick any four species of tiny antelope in the genus Madoka that dwell in the bushlands of eastern and southern Africa are known as dictics. Dictics get their name from the female's warning sounds. Both the male and female create a loud whistling sound in addition to the female's warning cry. Other animals may be alerted to predators by these noises.
Dick Dicks have enlarged snouts with bellows-like muscles through which blood is pushed, presumably to prevent overheating. Before being recirculated to the body, this blood is cooled by airflow and subsequent evaporation, however this method is only used in severe circumstances. Dick Dicks can withstand air temperatures of up to 40 degrees Celsius. Eastern African shrublands and savannas are home to Dick Dicks. Dick Dicks like areas that have a lot of food and plants, such as bushes. Dick Dicks may dwell in a variety of habitats, including deep forests and broad plains. Although they require adequate shelter and a lack of long grass, Dick Dicks are able to blend in with their environments because to their dusty coat. When Dick Dicks feel threatened, they employ a network of runways that run through and around their territory's borders. Dick Dicks are herbivores. Their food consists primarily of leaves, shoots, fruit, and berries with very little grass. They get enough water from their meal, therefore they don't need to drink. Microorganisms in their four-chambered stomachs help them digest their food, as do all even toad undulates. Following initial digestion, the meal is eructated and rechewed several times, a process known as rumination or chewing the cud. The tapered heads of Dick Dicks may help them consume the leaves between the spines of acacia trees while keeping their head high enough to identify predators. Number 2. Siphonophores the siphonophore may appear to be a single creature, but it is actually a colonial organism made up of morphologically and functionally specialized medusoid and polypoid zooids. Zooids are multicellular entities that grow from a single fertilized egg to become functioning colonies with the ability to reproduce, digest, float, maintain body posture, and move via jet propulsion. The majority of colonies are pelagic floaters that are long, thin, and translucent. Some siphonophores, like other hydrozones, use light to lure and attack prey. While many sea organisms emit blue and green bioluminescence, a siphonophore from the Arana genus was the first living form discovered to emit red light. Bioluminescence is present in nearly all siphonophores because these creatures are so delicate they are seldom seen alive. Siphonophore's bioluminescence is hypothesized to have developed as a protective mechanism. These non-visual animal's bioluminescent organs, called tentala, generate red light with a rhythmic flicking pattern, which attracts prey by resembling smaller species like zooplankton and copods. As a result, it's been deducted that they employ light to attract prey. The Schmidt Ocean Institute announced the finding of a 15-meter-long Apolamia siphonophore in submerged canyons near the Ningaloo coast on April 6, 2020. Perhaps the world's longest siphonophore. Number 1. Frigate Birds if you live along the shore in Mexico, the Caribbean, or the southern United States, you may have noticed a gigantic pterodactyl-like monster with a swollen crimson pouch beneath its throat and wondered what sort of Jumanji mayhem was taking place nearby. That, however, would be the Magnificent Frigate Bird. It actually does have the name Magnificent, and once they take on the air, you'll understand why. These birds who soar or magnificently above the waves are known as the Pirates of the Air, since their primary hunting strategy is to steal food from others, like those other infamous seabirds, the seagulls, and how they act around British people sandwiches. They may live up to 20 years, which is a long time for a bird, and juvenile birds use sticks to practice mugging on one another. They fly off with a stick, then annoy each other until the stick is dropped, at which point the pirate bird will pick it up and master the method before attempting it on helpless other birds. 
If birds were humans, jails would be filled with frigate birds, but I suppose that's just the way things are. Anecdotal evidence suggests that tame frigate birds are kept in Polynesia and Micronesia in the Pacific. A bird that has been captured from one island and returned to its original home could be trusted to return, therefore it would be used as a quick means to deliver a message there. What other crazy animals do you know of? If you had to invent an animal, what would it look like? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!